Welcome back to Lost Girls in History, where we uncover the remarkable stories of women who have made a significant impact on the world. Henrietta Lacks, whose full name was Loretta Pleasant, was born on August 1, 1920, in Roanoke, Virginia. She was the daughter of Johnny and Eliza Pleasant and grew up in a small, rural community called Clover, Virginia. Her family lived on a tobacco farm, and they belonged to the African-American community in the segregated South. When she was just four years old, her mother passed away, and her father struggled to raise her and her nine siblings on his own. As a result, Henrietta and her siblings were sent to live with various relatives in different towns. During her teenage years, Henrietta moved to Turner Station, a predominantly African-American neighborhood in Baltimore, Maryland. There, she lived with her cousin, David Day Lax, whom she later married. Together, they had five children, Henrietta worked as a tobacco farmer and later in domestic jobs to support her family. She was described as a lively, charismatic, and caring person who was deeply devoted to her family. She was known for her strong faith and involvement in her church community. Little did Henrietta know that her life would take a dramatic turn when she sought medical treatment for cervical cancer in 1951 at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. During her treatment, without her knowledge or consent, Samples of her cancer cells were taken by Dr. George Gay, a pioneering cell culture researcher. These cells, known as HeLa cells, would go on to play a pivotal role in medical breakthroughs and scientific advancements that have shaped the world we live in today. HeLa cells have an extraordinary ability to multiply and reproduce rapidly in laboratory conditions. Unlike most other human cells, which have a limited lifespan, HeLa cells can divide and continue to grow indefinitely. This characteristic makes them an invaluable tool for scientific experiments and allows researchers to study cellular processes over extended periods. HeLa cells became the first human cells to be successfully grown in a laboratory setting, opening doors to research on diseases like polio, cancer, and AIDS. These remarkable cells have been used in countless experiments and have contributed to the development of vaccines, gene mapping, and so much more. However, Henrietta's family remained in the dark about the significance of her cells for many years. They had no idea that a part of their mother's body was changing the face of science. Journalist, Rebecca Skloot, started investigating the story that the Lax family discovered the immortal cells of Henrietta Lax had been shared and sold around the world, making billions of dollars for the medical industry. In the 1970s, when the Lax family discovered that Henrietta's cells were still alive and being used in research, they had mixed reactions. While some family members were proud of Henrietta's contribution to science, others felt violated and exploited, especially considering the lack of consent and recognition. Rebecca Skloot, the author of The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, developed a relationship with the Lax family during her research for the book. Skloot helped bring Henrietta's story to light and created a foundation of trust with the family, which had been previously exploited by researchers and journalists. As the book gained popularity, the Lax family started to receive recognition for Henrietta's contribution to science. They became active advocates for informed consent and patient rights in medical research. They have also been involved in discussions regarding the commercialization and patenting of genetic material derived from human cells. The Henrietta Lacks Foundation was established in 2010 to honor Henrietta's legacy and provide assistance to her descendants. The foundation aims to promote education, support healthcare initiatives, and ensure that the Lacks family benefits from the commercialization of Henrietta's cells. Henrietta Lacks' story continues to raise important ethical questions and spark discussions about the intersection of race, science, and medical research. Her story serves as a powerful reminder to strive for a future where scientific progress and ethical considerations can coexist harmoniously. Want to learn more? Go to marygolearning.com for more history.